Wir sind wieder sehr, sehr froh, dass wir an dieser Stelle diesmal gleich zwei Ausstellungen zeigen können. Was Sie hier im Saal sehen, ist der, das sind Seiten, Originalseiten aus dem Comic Fraternity von Monoera. Wir werden um 15 Uhr mit diesem Zeichner hier auch ein Künstlergespräch führen, wozu Sie natürlich auch herzlich eingeladen sind. Und im Moment warten wir noch etwas auf Herrn Monoera, der uns gleich mit seiner Anwesenheit beehren wird. Ich hoffe, Sie haben da alle schon die Zeit, äh, sich die Zeit genommen, sich die Ausstellung anzugucken. Wir haben er hat uns persönlich ausgewählte, sehr, sehr schöne Seiten aus seinem Comic zum Tarantino-Film Django Anschein zur Verfügung gestellt. Und ich bitte um Entschuldigung, dass sich der Künstler etwas verspätet hat. Das wird wahrscheinlich noch ungefähr zehn Minuten dauern, bis wir das Gespräch beginnen. Aber dann geht es auch gleich richtig los. Ich freue mich sehr, dass so viele von Ihnen hier anwesend sind. Und ich hoffe, Sie besuchen auch noch die anderen Ausstellungen und Veranstaltungen des Comic Festivals, das ja auch noch morgen äh, stattfindet. Äh, heute Abend ist im Max Forum, im Maximilian Forum, der große Comic Festival Party. Da werden sicherlich auch zahlreiche Künstler anwesend sein. Eintritt ist frei, Getränkepreise sind moderat. Da sind Sie auch sehr, sehr herzlich zu eingeladen. Ja, ich gucke mal auf, ob Sie den Künstler jetzt empfangen nehmen und Ihnen den dann so schnell wie möglich im Saal zuführen. Und wie gesagt, gucken Sie schon auch noch die Zeichnung und Bilder an und bis gleich. Dann. Les saludo en nombre del Instituto Cervantes de Múnich a esta charla con el artista, con el señor Guerra y el señor Brunsch. Le felicito por haber cumplido felizmente con esta travesía por Múnich que supone el mero camino a cualquier sitio en estos momentos. Ich möchte mich bei Herrn Brunsch bedanken, bei Herrn Kompa, für die freundliche Zusammenarbeit und hoffe, dass wir auch in Zukunft gemeinsam den Bildern folgen werden, die uns der Comic ja, schönen Dank, Herr Böse. Wir sind sehr, sehr froh, dass wir wieder hier sein dürfen. Äh, auch in den Zeiten, wo das alles vielleicht immer etwas knapper wird in Europa, auch mit finanziellen Mitteln. Das spüren wir, das spürt das Institut des Cervantes. Und umso froher sind wir, dass wir uns trotzdem gleich bei zwei Ausstellungen des Comic Festivals hier im Hause so tatkräftig unterstützt haben. Vielen Dank, Herr Böse. Und es ist ein tolles Team hier, auch wenn ich vorab noch bei den Dolmetschern bedanken. Ich habe gestern ein Gespräch mit Milo Manara geführt, da hatten wir auch eine sehr, sehr temperamentvolle und sehr engagierte Dolmetscherin, aber es geht einfach im Gespräch sehr, sehr viel Zeit verloren, wenn man halt immer noch warten muss, dass die Sache besetzt wird. Also simultan Dolmetschen ist was ganz, ganz Tolles und auch dafür sind wir sehr, sehr dankbar und da sind wir froh drüber. Aber jetzt möchte ich auch nicht lange mehr euch auf die Folter spannen. Ich bin sehr, sehr froh, dass uns er in Guerra hier besucht und er hat uns auch ganz, ganz viele Originalzeichnungen zur Verfügung gestellt von seiner Django Anschein comic adaption Heißt ihn bitte willkommen. Gera kommt doch bitte auf die Bühne und herzlich willkommen in München auf dem Comic Festival. Vor zwei Jahren hatten wir, das okay, okay. Äh, vor zwei Jahren hatten wir hier äh, spanische Comic-Künstler zu Gast und hatten auf dem Comic-Festival München auch das Thema Comic-Gastland Spanien. Jetzt bist du nicht, nicht wirklich ein Spanier, irgendwie auf dem, auf dem Papier bist du schon Spanier, aber du bist gebürtiger Jugoslawe und äh, da würde mich erstmal interessieren, äh, welche Rolle in deiner Jugend die Comics gespielt haben. Was ist dort überhaupt, was, 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 war, was war dort überhaupt greifbar an Comics und was hast du da gelesen und was, was hat dich beeinflusst, beeindruckt? Hallo, Castellano, oder du sprichst Englisch oder du sprichst Englisch? Ja, ich habe 53 Jahre alt, die nicht so gut sind. Und die Bismaestro sind bastante viejo, weil wir pertenecen a la Escuela Vieja de cómic y la gente que, que nunca sabrá de mí, de mí eh, digamos, personas de la juez o de un artista, son gente como Alex Todd, Joao Martini, Chuck Davis, Jean Giraud, Gigi, Franquin, que es un artista. Y la, la, vivir en, en, en Yugoslavia, en la antigua Yugoslavia, la dificultad era vivir de cómics. Talentos no... Talentos no... Oh, perdona, es que... Hay un poquito... Talentos no faltaban, pero el mercado no era existente en Yugoslavia. Era difícil uh, uh, vivir de, de, uh, 
de la ejecución de un arte como Moe. Y pues para cortar, allí ya construí un nombre, era bastante conocido en la antigua Yugoslavia, pero sobre el año 91, cuando empezó la guerra y todo aquello, pues ya para mí personalmente era el momento de irme de allí. Me fui a España y tardé unos 6-7 años en volver a Tuve que trabajar en, en casas de publicidad, tenía muchas experiencias muy guapas con todo esto, muchos carteles de jazz, de teatro y sobre el 98 99 yo iba preparando mis cómics, iba a un de Francia, de la feria firmé un, un par de contratos con Bulena y volví a, a los cómics hasta 2004 entre 2004 y 2007 uh, hacía uh, mis álbumes para, para el mercado francés con mi guión propio y sobre 2007 2006 empecé con Scalpel Scalpel de, para Vértigo lo hacía a lo largo de 6, casi 7 años y nos hicimos pues, mundialmente conocidos a través de esa serie y sobre estas fechas ya llegó la colaboración con Tanti. Sentir 
turista aceptable es casi lo más importante de un extranjero, donde esté, da igual donde esté. Es la parte más importante que, que lleva a uno dentro. Y pues costó unos 3, 4 años de vivir duro, duro buscar trabajo porque no conocía a nadie, con el que estaba en crisis, sobre todo español. Y pues al final, poco a poco, se organiza una vida normal. Pero yo pienso de que con la, uh, hubo momentos de mucha suerte en Barcelona. Y, y lo que era, por ejemplo, lo que marca a uno para toda la vida es de que momentos que hemos tenido mucha suerte en Barcelona eran momentos peores que se vivían en los Balcanes. Y eso es que para toda la vida es, es, es difícil definir cómo se siente uno hacia esto, pero uh, yo sé de que en mi antiguo país, ex país, la gente se lo pasaba peor que nunca y yo en un país lejano, España, tenía buenos momentos de aceptación, de, 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 de música, de cómic, de amigos, pues eso sí que se pierde, esta parte es... Quiero decir que la conclusión es de que con estos, estas decisiones tan dramáticas, uno no puede saber qué es lo que le espera y qué hará para siempre. No, 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 uh, no hay nada en la vida que puede preparar a uno para consecuencias de decisiones de táctico. Bueno, Excuse me for, for all the pe other people in the world who, who speak Spanish, but it, maybe it's, it's not. It's not. If, if you want me, I can repeat my answers. It's really not a problem. I, I, first of all, please, yeah, I will. I will. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having us here. I'm really proud to be here. It's very nice to be here. It's my first time in Munich. And I just feel fantastic, really. Last night it was really good. So, thank you very much. Uh, I'll come again whenever they ask, okay? <laughs> okay, food, food. Uh. Okay, we were talking about a pretty serious subject, but uh, uh, I think that the, the basis of the question was uh, how did I go through Uh, what happened in Serbia and Yugoslavia, I suppose, what makes an artist decide to change life in such a dramatic manner? And my answer was that there is no way that one can be prepared for something like this. Uh, when the war comes, war is, uh, when anybody, I suppose, that, that's living right now, talking about war is something that happened long ago, but when the more actual war happens to you, to you is something else. It's really difficult to define it. You have to react. You have to do something about it, to stay, to go, to, to do something about your life. So this is the part that nobody really expects that it's going to come. So uh, my decision to go out from, from Yugoslavia was very, very pragmatic, very uh, fast, in, in a very, uh, how should I say this, practical way. I, I don't want to shoot anybody, that's all. It's very simple. So the only difference is that uh, maybe because uh, it was very difficult to live as an artist in, in ex-Yugoslavia, maybe this is what, what pushed, pushed me a bit more. I, I went out a bit more easily. And uh, the decision was very, you know, the, the, it was, uh, looking at it not now, it sounds dramatic because the, at Friday I was in Barcelona. It was 21st of September, I think, of 91. Friday I was in Barcelona and next Monday was general draft. So it was, <laughs> I escaped for a centimeter really. It was really very close to run, you know. But nobody plans something. Now thinking about it, I say, wow, you know. But then it was just, you know, if, if, if I don't go out that way, I will go out some other way. The point was to somehow have the, the, the feeling of controlling my life. And uh, in Barcelona, it was pretty tough, first two or three years, but the, the way Spanish people are, they're very open. What, what's most important for me, what was really fantastic, is that I felt from the first day accepted. And if you're a stranger, if you're trying to live your life anywhere, the, the main thing is to feel accepted. 
you know, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. You know, friends, all these things are, they come and go. But if you feel accepted, it's some kind of general feel, this is the main thing, the most important thing. And to, to have normal life in Barcelona, it was maybe three or four, maybe five years almost. And I couldn't uh, work in comics because it was a great crisis. And I worked uh, posters, uh, theaters, uh, anything visual, Honda, fairs, uh, conventions, uh, monasteries, anything, just working. And then around 90, between 98 and 99, I prepared my comics again. I'm trying to reduce all the information as, as fast as I can. About 97, 98, 98 more or less, I had some projects for France. I went there, I signed a contract with Duena, did a few uh, albums as a just like a starting point. Around 2004, I finished my own album, uh, written by me also, a, a pirate story. And then up till uh, 2005, 2006, uh, uh, came a call from Vertigo. Uh, I was contacting them and, and, and we made some kind of uh, uh, instant pact. Was, I was really, really lucky. Everything functioned from the first second and then we did scalped. And I did scale for around six years, and it, it seems like we are worldly known about this. This series is really respected, and it's very actually nice to be in a position to be to enjoy such respect. So, uh, and around first time around 2007, uh, Tarantino and his crew called me. We did a short story, short uh, cutout scene for Inglorious Bastards. And around six months ago, they called me again, saying that Tarantino wants to work with me again in an in a entire book, Jungle Unchained, and I said yes. And that's why <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, to, to reduce the, the information. Okay. So more or less, this is what happened to me. <laughs> but that's okay. That's really a uh, complete life for you. <laughs> so I'm, I must go. It's, it's, only, it's only 20 years. <laughs> Go a bit back into the past. Um, I want to know in Yugoslavia, you also draw comics and they have been published. That it had been Western comics, I think. Yeah, I grew up in Westerns, and uh, but it was uh, it's very difficult to explain. I was pretty known in my ex country. It was uh, I suppose I've been lucky. I was recognized as a talent and all these things. But it, it was very difficult to live. I wanted my life, not just my talent. I wanted to live with this. So it was very difficult. It's just uh, there are no means. Nobody is really serious. Uh, you know, socialism. There are some good parts of, of this thing that's called socialism, but the, the bad part is always that it's it's a kingdom of mediocre people. <laughs> it's very difficult to break this uh, in capitalism or here or whatever. In the United States, you have this kind of clash of things. You you always nervous about something. You always have some kind of idea that's better than the other one. So it's tough, but what socialism for me meant was that, that you can't break that everybody, without fighting you, think in, a certain, think in a certain way that it's difficult to break, just to show yourself. But, but I'm convinced my talent is worth. And you can't do that there. They respect you. I was giving interviews. I had some uh, golden plumage of my town, acad acad academic awards, but I couldn't buy tobacco. There was no money for the I just couldn't live. So this contrast is really, um, especially in artistic lives, it's really difficult. Because you're, you feel nowhere, you just, what am I? Who needs my talent? So you go because you feel angry because nobody needs you. Or they maybe do, but they don't tell this to you. And you go to Barcelona or, or here or the United States, whatever, you have the sense that you need it. And what's good is that uh, they do use you, but at the same time you have the possibility of using them. So it's more, much more honest. You know, there are lots of problems with, with capitalism. We're, you know, we're witnessing the whole thing. But uh, uh, the, the basis of it uh, is uh, there is some kind of, of uh, basic respect that I like more personally. I hope it's understandable what I'm yeah, talking about. Sure. I think everybody understands it. I don't want to sound so serious, it's just a subject. <laughs> okay, let's talk football. <laughs> I think we have one last question in that complex. Uh, your nationality, yesterday you said... I'm Spanish. Yeah, but 
you also have the flag of your whole country in Spain. It's right? difficult. Officially, I'm Spanish, and, and it's obvious that I'm 22 years living in Barcelona. It's obvious that I'm Spanish. It's very clear. But I still, in my mind, translate that I'm Yugoslavian, Serbian, then Spanish. It's like when you speak a new language. You, can, you can't speak a new language until you start thinking on that language. When you translate your own language to that language, you still are fighting it. So I, I, it's, it's, I'm Spanish. I have a Spanish passport. But I still have to translate this. I, I didn't expect, it's very, uh, it's weird. Because uh, I, I didn't expect that my roots were so deep. They surprise you, you know. But um, let's conclude this with, with uh, it's tough to be out of your country, your friend, your element, your, uh, uh, you know, it's, um, but this toughness, uh, one day you discover that this is freedom. You feel a bit tough, it's not easy, but this means you're free. You really are alone. Nobody, nothing behind you. So it's a good feeling. You know, you, you search for satisfaction, not happiness, <laughs> or things like those. They start to matter, you, you, you can't expect something like this, it just happens. So I do recommend, uh, I don't know, a bit more risks in, in our life. I think it's worth it. It makes you mature better, I suppose. Thank That's you. not football, please. <laughs> <laughs> not football, let's uh, talk comic a bit. Uh, it, it, was really, uh, it was not so easy to, to, to publish comics, but I think in Spain it's also not so easy. More. Many Spanish uh, artists have to publish their comics in, 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 in France or in, in, in the United States. And tell us a, a bit about comics in Spain. Spain is, is, a, is a country of, of enormous comic book talent great artists, but something happened two times with their market. They, I think that Spain it's, itself as a country is guilty of not having a comic book market. Uh, it's, it's big enough, uh, people always have, uh, there is money if, if you like something, the CDs or, or movies, or it's a very obvious, it's very simple to see. But something happened with, uh, I think it's a fast money, uh, and I think that if you, um, the talents like Alfonso Fond, the, 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 Victor de la Fuente, uh, Juan Juvernido, Juvernido uh, lately, so many guys are coming from Spain, they're fantastic, but somehow the uh, market, Sp Spanish market is not uh, well organized. And, and uh, this could be, a, you know, uh, this could be a lesson to everybody, I still think that in Germany, uh, a comic has to, uh, has to fight. And I think it's worth it, and I think it's, it's uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, what's good about comic is that, um, comparing it with uh, movies, for example, uh, you need uh, uh, authorities in, in movies of, of levels of, of Kurosawa or Houston or whomever to see that the movie is art, because it looks like life too much. You, you have a series of moments that are hypnotic, but with, with comic, it's such a... Uh, Comic at its, at its base is so close to art, it's so organic, so direct. So I think that the, the time for comic could come, really. There's so many things are not said in comics, it's just scratched. Because it's, and it's, I think it's, a, it's an art that, that's, uh, that could be a future, really. I had been at the Comic Festival of Alfa several times and meet there. And I think they publish much, much more comics in Spain than in Germany, but they don't publish so much comics from Spanish authors. That's the problem. The Spanish authors, yeah, the, the, the sad thing is the Spanish artists are, uh, artists are publishing in Spain through uh, French or American publishers. I, my comics are in Spain, but uh, they're published through American publisher or, or French publisher, which is really sad. Just, you know, I, I don't know what's happening and why, but uh, uh, it's a big market, it's, it's a great country, as well as Germany, I'm serious. This is, you know, I really think that in Germany, comics, uh, seeing Michael, you talking with you guys and having a great time, people, there, it, it, I sense that there is a need for a good comic. Something good, good is always needed. That's, that's the base of it. Yeah. And how did you get the job, DC Vertigo, to, to, to draw a sculpt? Uh, I, uh, I called uh, my old friend, uh, best time I have, he's a great friend, Serbian, he's a great, Igor Korde, great friend of mine. And uh, I was doing a comic for France and I needed a, a secondary game, something that I would do as a second series, and wanted to, to, to see what happens in the United States. And he gave me uh, six or seven 
phone numbers and emails and things. And Vertigo came back to me. And uh, from the get-go, from the first second, something clicked, really. And the first, uh, at first I wanted, he offered me Batman or things like those. And I said, well, give me something more modest just to get to know each other, to know how we work and things like those. And uh, uh, Will Dennis uh, instantly gave me script for uh, Scalp. And for me, it was instant yes. I said, yeah, yes, it's fantastic. So uh, I, I signed a contract in a matter of a month and a half. You normally need three or four months just to have those briefings and things. And especially if it's a new serial, then they have to justify the whole thing. It's just, they do it this way. But it was very, very fast, stroke of life. And the audience, the, the readers were some, something extraordinary. Each new book had more readers and more readers and more readers. It was just something that happened between us and readers, which we are really especially proud of, really. And it's about the work together with the author. Was it, was it easy or was it easy going? Do you also bring some own ideas in, in the comic? Well, uh, comic is very, uh, especially American comic, uh, it was, for me it was tough, it was seven years without vacation. I was drawing scout seven years, not one day of vacation, all the time. And I got fat. <laughs> And, uh, uh, because the, the, the American rules are very tough and uh, I produced between 18 to 22 pages a month. So right now I have some thousand and, I don't know, thousand and fifty pages original. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Nice <laughs> We don't talk football. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a very, very tough rhythm. To, to but the, the scripts were very, very good. Everybody was really excited, and it was a really privileged feel to be inside of something like this. Everybody was was excited. Uh, the, the editor knew all the scripts by heart. It was just uh, quite a few times. I say, we call each other and we discuss this or that scene or sequence. And I said, he said, Dashiell says this and Red Crow says that. He said, no, no, this is on page 12. And he was right most of the time. And it's an editor who knows my script better than myself. <laughs> so it was really, uh, everybody was very excited. And it's really, uh, it's nice to be in that situation that everybody is, is you know, and it's weird, I have to say this, you know, we, we say this everywhere we go. Uh, it's very special because I'm Serbian, living in Spain, drawing a comic about Indians in the United States. <laughs> the covers are done by a Scottish guy who lives in England. Color, colorist is Italian woman who lives in England also. <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 the script writer is uh, uh, Jason he's living in Kansas City, writing about Indians, this is as close as, 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 as it came. And then in New York is our publisher, and uh, the landlord of the system is Bulgarian. <laughs> and we, we went as far as we could. So the, the whole thing is that all of us are doing comic about uh, Indians. So it's very, very, something happened with this series. It was very funny from the first moment, everybody somehow felt good about it. And I never went into reservation. We, the, the best that happened about Scout is that Indians were very touched and we had some mails of, of fans that were really, they touch you, seriously. They are really grateful. And my trick was that I liked, I adored Westerns. And I had some friends in, in gypsy uh, pueblos, gypsy uh, villages. So uh, I knew what poverty was. So combination of liking Westerns, noir movies, and gypsy feel. I knew how they, they react, how they, what they do in between of them. So this was really helpful. And this is how I created Scott. I never went to reservation, although so many males were, they were convinced that we were there or living there. This was the nicest part. And, and it's, you know, no, as I said, you can't plan something, but some, somehow, somewhere I deserve this, but I don't know where. But it really clicked. Something very special happened with this serial, really. Yeah, Skant is, is a western. It, it, it takes place in, in, in our time and in the presence. And now you can. But it was, it was a really your first contact uh, with Quentin Tarantino when you adapted uh, Diago Unchained before you make an adaption of the opening of Inglourious Busters for, for the Playboy. Uh, it had been seven pages, I think. It's around 
Yeah. Six or eight, it's a human record, maybe. Uh, it's a short story. How did that happen? Who contacted you? Yeah. Just call me out of the blue. What I heard afterwards is that Samuel Jackson is a great fan of Scallop. Ah. So I suppose he showed Tarantino our uh, Scallop books. And uh, they just, uh, Rob Wilson from Playboy just called me and said, Would you like to do a scene that's cut out from the movie Warriors Bastards? I said, well, Yeah, of course. Okay. So we did it, and, and it was a tough schedule, really. I had a lot of work with Scout, but we did it, and I, I thought that was that, you know, that's it. You know. And some few years afterwards, he was doing the Western. I heard about that he was doing Western, but I couldn't uh, know what happens next. And then I received a mail from maybe six, seven months ago, mail from, from uh, Ben Obernathy saying, like, Quentin would like to work with you. I said, yeah, of course, yeah. Well, all the book, and uh, you just accept these things. It, it, it mismatched a lot of things, but I had a lot of other projects in my mind. It's a very tough schedule again. I, I wanted to rest, to be sincere, but it was looks like it was impossible. And it's a uh, it's a great script, good time for me again. But, I've, I've, but I think in this uh, few pages of the Eclairia, your adaptation of Eclairia's Bastards, there's also a scene which is not in the movie. I think. Yeah, there there are a few pages from the from the. Uh, from the script, and they're not in the movie. I suppose that was the idea, because uh, what I'm doing in Django right now is original script, which means that there are quite a few scenes that are not in the movie. Even the ending is uh, just a little bit different. So I'm doing the original script right now. Uh, and, but the Django is, again, the, the, the rhythm of, of, of pages for Django is just infernal, really. It's just too, too, much, too many things to do. So I needed help, and then we called uh, uh, Daniel Zezid from his Slovenian who lives in New York, uh, Jason Latour, who is doing flashbacks, and Dennis Calvin, who is doing some of the pages. And, me. and you started to draw both adaptions before you watched the movie. Huh? I, I still didn't see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I still didn't see the movie. <laughs> no, don't, don't tell me how it is. That can't be true. That's okay. It's a dire. But uh, uh, I still didn't see the movie, and that's on purpose. It's, it's much easier for me. Uh, uh, seeing the movie, I would repeat things that I, 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 I just um, uh, I work differently. Mm -hmm. What's nice is that, that, and people were asking this like, like yesterday that we talked, I still didn't talk directly with, with Tarantino, which uh, personally I think is a bit ridiculous. But uh, uh, there are some laws that they, uh, he's talking to me through his producer, and I'm talking to him through my uh, Vertigo DC uh, office. So I just, but, uh, but uh, there are some kind of uh, love letters in between because everything I wanted, he gave me everything. I did include, even changes of faces, and I did a new kind of cast, and he, everything I did or uh, pleaded for, he said, "Yeah, green light, just let him let it work." So it's, it was nice because uh, I feel uh, respected in a way, you know. But this kind of, it's just. Uh, I think it's taking its toll on, 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 on this quantity of pages, and, and there is some kind of uh, uh, the, the, the Tarantino movie. Everybody talks a lot, mm -hmm. so <laughs> there are problems like uh, they give they give you a page, and on one panel, on one panel, they say, for example, he falls off a horse, he, he his gun uh, goes out, the, the horse dies, and the ghost screams, which is four or five panels for for the for the comic book. It's not one. They, they, uh, so many things have to be worked on to adapt the uh, very good movie script to come. And then in, in, uh, from around 120 pages for the whole book, we are around, right now we're around 200 pages. So it's, it's quite a you know, portion of additional work. Yeah, how many issues are it? I was surprised and afraid yet. That, that I read page from 40 page. Yeah, they do. Yes. What happened? Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing. Uh, uh, it's uh, seven issues. Each issue around 40 pages. Okay. And uh, they seriously at the beginning because Sony uh, took a uh, production part from from Warner Brothers, and they didn't produce comics before. So there were really funny stuff going on. They were. They seriously asked me if I can do 40 pages a month. So, you know, if, you, if you make some kind of window on my door and give you food from time to time, you know, what is this? You know, it's just, it's impossible. So, I just didn't do these things before. And uh, everybody's pretty excited, but I think, uh, if you ask me, uh, uh, it's going to be, it's very nice to participate in this kind of project, but there are too many people. It's just a comic and a good script, 
and it should be as personal as possible. And from the get-go, it wasn't personal. Uh, I think this, this is going to be the difference between Scout that we did, that everything was personal. Everybody did the best they could because they were having fun. And we, we had those, uh, quite a few scenes were uh, uh, written in Scout. I, I draw them, then we, we, we cut out three or four pages and nobody's going to pay this to me, but because everybody's so excited and you said, no, this scene doesn't fit. So we took it out and we made another one. So this kind of excitement reflects pages, you know, and people somehow sense this. And I think the only, uh, uh, I think that this is what Scout did. And I still, I, I must be sincere, really, I still am surprised that people are uh, respecting Scout in, in a very unusual way. They, 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 think, uh, they think these people are alive inside of this car. It's a very, very unusual experience. We have, I have letters from Indians discussing about destiny of this or that person. And there was uh, some critic that were, was attacking us. Like, we are not doing justice for Indian people. We are again representing them as a, a crime people. There are killings and, and violations and, and wars and all these things. And this was going on for quite a few issues, three or four. He was just having a black hole for us there. He was just attacking us all the time. And then the Indian woman, I've, I'm not sure about her name, I almost said her name because I'm not, I'm not sure. Then some woman, she was like 70 years old, made a mail, like, like, like you know, a, a reply on the blog. I, my name is like, you know, White Feather or something. And she, and she, she said to him, to this critic, you are a cliche, not them. They're trying, they're not Indians, they're trying their best to do what they can. It, it's a noir story, so the cliche, about a uh, uh, cliché is you who are attacking these people. So this was really fantastic that some Indian woman defends us. Like she said, you know, I, I feel my youth, this part. It's really, uh, it's, uh, when we were uh, searching for, for documentation, it's really incredible. Uh, in Dakota Reservation, every fourth woman is raped. Every fourth woman. It's just incredible. You know, we're making an honest story thinking we are exaggerating things. But then you go to reality and it's even more, it's just unbelievable. And it's always somebody who is inside of the family and it's just mesmerizing, really. Tremendous stuff going on. They're just left there to die. So uh, this man, each issue, when, when those mails came, it's, each, each issue was just a little bit more special, you know, really. We were really proud of being it. Was it? Was it planned before how many issues will come out, out from, from Scout? No. Uh, uh, actually, we thought around 30 issues. And we went, uh, the idea afterwards, is it, 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 with sixth book, we were at the New York Times bestsellers. Two times we were in the first place. Two, two books were at first there. Some of them were sixth or something. So uh, around the fifth book, maybe. Uh, then we thought if we we're going to do 10 more. And then we, we made a, some kind of reunion in New York and talked about it a lot. And then we wanted to finish the book with, with uh, 10 books, uh, 60 issues, uh, and not doing more because we wanted to, have, uh, to finish it while we, we have, uh, still have more ideas. We didn't want to spend all ideas and then prolong the life because of a commercial success. We wanted to finish it uh, as is, you know. And you won't see any youth of, of Scout, any sequel of Scout. We will, this is finished story. We will never do this again. Because we think it matters. It's just, you know, we will do new projects and it's not going to be Scout. Nobody else is going to do this as a serial or, you know, to make this commercial or whatever. Yeah, I, think, I think it's a good concept at DC Vertigo that they add the series sometimes and that they are not going on and on that one. Yeah. Uh, Vertigo is the most, the, 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 the most European editor in the United States, you know, that's Vertigo. And they are very lonely with this, uh, and it's tough time, you know, they, their, their ups and downs are uh, different from Marvel, because Marvel has capacity to, to live through these things. Uh, uh, Vertigo is some kind of Lamborghini inside of DC Comics, you know, like, 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 like a cheetah or, you know, expensive animal, but it means, you know, everybody's proud of it, but it can be just something very uh, representative, you know. We don't sell like Batman does, but uh, uh, through us, everybody is respected and we sell enough for up, you know, we're the owners of the rights, so it's a tricky subject. Uh, uh, and I must say that the, the way we talked last night was very interesting. Uh, uh, 
They know that they are in the United States, that they are cursed in the bear market. They know that they appear to be too commercial. But it's difficult. It's a huge market. It's very, very difficult and slow to make changes. And they are, there are people who are fighting this. But it's just very difficult. That's all. So uh, I respect a lot of those guys. I respect them much more than before. Because I got to know that they know how that they look with all these Batmans and Supermans all over again and X-Men and all these things are, you know. But uh, that's the way the market is. It's very difficult for them. In Europe, you have this kind of competition that always, it always is happening. And Europe is, uh, you know, what's best about Europe that you have this, so many countries in such a small space, you know. And, and I really think that all the cultures should be left alone to be different. We should take out our, our, our uh, uh, borders, those, those funny lines that are on the map. But culture should be different. Culture should be, uh, should be maintained and, and, you know, as much as we can. But uh, the, 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 in the United States you have, I don't know, 51 Spains or Germanys. You know, it's just enormous, it's just huge. So it, it's just a very, very um, big, heavy animal. That, that, it needs a lot to move. They're heavy. They, they sometimes don't know it. Uh, and you have to work a bit more to prove yourself as some, somebody who has good ideas and then they will accept you and change things towards your ideas. But they're very heavy with new ideas. They, you know, they're not prone to do this. Yeah. Uh, back to, to Jaco Unchained. You did not draw the complete comic. You know work together with other artists, was there a dramatic, dramatic concept? Who draw this and who draw that? Well, at first, uh, my, I was, as I said, I was given a green light for, for all my wishes. I had my colleagues from Scout, I chose her, I chose her, I chose Jason Latour, who I admire a lot, uh, who did flashbacks, and, uh, and uh, the only uh, thing that they proposed was that the different people do covers, which was okay with me. But then, as I said, about third issue, Sony, uh, uh, finally somebody revised the script. And it was very clear that it's absolutely impossible for one person to do all the book in, in this short time. It's just absolutely impossible. So we had to uh, ask for more people. And then I said, well, whomever. I wanted to coordinate to, to do it. Your are my great friend, Croatian. But he asked, I think he asked for too much money or something like this. So they called uh, Daniel Jorge and Dennis Cowan. So, but, but, uh, how should I say, Django is a, is a very good script, uh, very good inspiration for doing good pages. I hope that you will find it that way. But uh, I don't feel that Django is completely mine. So uh, I'm proud to be there. And there, there are fantastic dialogues, dialogues and situations and fun to do them. Especially, I'm, I'm let alone to do them my way, not like the movie. But it's just uh, too, uh, as I said, too many people are involved. And I can't justify all the time this or that. Or, or uh, just, you know, it should be script writer and, and me, and editor, maybe colorist, and having fun, you know, being passionate about these things. And they're used to this quantity of people. Everybody says, you know, you have those, those guys. Uh, each one of them is making a comment on this or that, and then you receive mails that are just ridiculous. You know, uh, they're trying to make you justify uh, anything that, that crosses that their mind. So, but from the get-go, I was very, at the beginning, I was very, very uh, dry and sharp with this. I, I just, you know, I do this my way or I don't do it. Please leave me, you know, to my work. And what's good is that Quentin understands these things. You know, anything that I, I wanted, Quentin approved. Anything, really, anything. The quantity of pages from 22 to 27, then when the second issue was ending. But anything that I wanted to improvise or, or the, the Brittle brothers are not, the, the, they're drawn by me totally different than in the movie. He said, yeah, yeah, great, fantastic, just go on. Go on, go on. But it's, it's a, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't like, how should I say this? Uh, I, my next project for sure is not going to be something uh, about movies or, you know, it's going to be comic book again, just, you know, a bit tired of the whole thing.
but you get the script of Tarantino directly and you adapted it from the script. Did you also cut some scenes or yeah, you adapt the, 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 the complete script? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 what I couldn't change is to take uh, uh, out or put in one word. Words have to be, dialogues have to be there like, like you know, written in stone. But anything else, if I move the scene or, or make some kind of different cut in the movie, they see, if they see it workable or I, I justify it with some idea, they say, yeah, yeah, great, go on, go on, for that, go on, great. For example, in the second issue, I added almost, I think around six pages more, just to make it, it's the first time Django kills somebody. Let's make it, uh, you know, give me six pages, not one panel or two panels or two pages. Give me something to, to create this, you know, for, first of all, to let him stop talking for once. You know, each page, each page has so many bubbles and, you know, and they said, yeah, 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 great, no problem, no problem. So this is really great, you know, it's a good situation to be in, because they let you work, so this is really great. Did you hear something from Tarantino? Did he like your comment? Yeah, a lot, yeah. The only ridiculous thing is that I have to hear it from a producer who says this to my, to me, this office who says this to me. Just, okay, okay, okay. I think we will meet, we will promote the book around September or something, when the book comes out and we will be together. Uh, right now, uh, I must say this, it's really, really a lot of work. Nobody has time to, you know, make jokes or have a good time or... It's really, uh, it's a lot of work. I'm at least 12 pages a day, 12 hours a day at my table. It's really a lot of work, a lot of days and months and just... And if they ask you to adapt the next Tarantino movie? No, you know, I would not. <laughs> It's a, it's, 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 it was great for once, and I, I will have a great time until the end. The ending is really great, and I have this script. I actually received original script with it. this this thick. It's, it's really a lot of pages, and it's it's a privileged position to be in. But I really want to do just a, you know a good comic, and that's it. No fame, no uh, guaranteed uh, success, or just come back to comic again, back to back to life. <laughs> Okay. On which comic project are you actually working? Uh, I'm having several. Uh, uh, around September, uh, what's, what I'm most excited about, uh, two things will happen. I will finish my script that's called uh, Smoky Joe uh, Blues for Mini. And it's going to, uh, right now, I'm, I'm discussing this with uh, Urban Comics or Dargo, I'm not sure. But I'm very, I have a lot of. Uh, ideas about it. I wrote the first half of the first book and I have five albums uh, uh, plotted. And the second thing, the important thing that's going to happen is that I will work with Jason and Aaron again uh, after Scout. We will do something new and I can't say more, but it's really, uh, I just thought if, if it surprises you as much as it surprised me, it's something that nobody expected. It happened in New York and, and we, were, we were in a hall and he, he said something that I was like, what? You know, and it really is something that nobody, he said, what do you think, let's do this. Because we were waiting for something good to happen, it's been a year that Scout is over, so we just let, let you know, the time pass and something will, will come by, something will happen. And you work again for DC Vertigo? <coughs> for what? Sorry? For you work again? I don't know. Uh, right now, uh, we'll know who, who offers best. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Right now we, we are considering uh, best offers. It's, it, uh, I think we will, uh, uh, any excuse we have, we will do things for Vertigo again. But the situation uh, with, with DC and Vertigo is so, uh, how should I say, it? they're in crisis and they're trying to rule out as much as we can, but we can't offer our new project if the, the if, how should I say, if we're not happy. It can't be the same thing as with Scout. We're just higher right now, you know, so we will go with the best offer. But uh, uh, covers, short stories, uh, we will do any, any, any excuse just to keep on working with very well and low. Any excuse, short one. Yes. Okay, Gera said that he'd like to answer all the questions from the yeah. audience. Please, you have a question for him. Football question also. <laughs> Maybe also something about comics, about Spain, Yugoslavia. Yes. Whatever you want, feel free. Um, I'm going to bring the mic around, otherwise you don't get the chance. Uh, thank you for your clear Oxford English. <laughs> and uh, I have a question uh, because I've seen uh, your pictures from your comic Black Pirates in 
Also, uh, the first question is uh, Jungle and Chains, the first uh, comic uh, which is published in German. I, I just don't know really. They, they, from time to time, I get information who publishes and how. But I, it's, it, I, I'm not in the. I'm not tracing this thing for me. I'm not sure. Uh, what I would like is to, to have both of them in, in German. Uh, uh, Scout and Django. Django is going to be translated for sure. This is guaranteed. I just don't know who is going to be a publisher or when. Maybe they will publish the entire book when we finish the, the whole thing. Uh, which I think this is the, the way to, to do it. No, but I thought we'll bring out Django Unchained in a complete okay. edition when yeah. it's and when it's finished. And Panini unfortunately don't publish uh, Scout. It's, yeah. it's it's really a pity and I I, I, I don't want to, it's not planned to uh, publish uh, Black Parrot or so in Germany. No, I don't, you don't know. <laughs> let's, let's wait for... The, 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 in the United States people are also are asking about my other works. Yeah. And, and uh, I think really it's very, uh, how should I say, a nice moment for me. But we really should be careful. I don't want to be able to have everything published at the same time, which is, you know, let's do it with, with, with reason. Let's do it with, with some reason, some uh, yes. some excuse to do it, you know. And I would be happy, you know. You can't imagine that, I suppose. I would like to have all of those things published. But just let's do it with time and reason. Let's do it seriously. That's all I ask. Okay, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you, sir. One more question? Please do. <laughs> What is your plan when you work? Uh, you can ask from German, no problem. Please. Um, it's easy to translate. Yeah, what is your arbeitsplan? Uh, what's your working plan? Oh, when you organize you? Your, your organize your, your uh, after so many years, it's just you wake up and you work. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I try to, uh, to, I will tell you, I suppose this could be a secret to say or something. Uh, what I discovered, along the time, these hours, uh, that I did, is that it's very important to work as you feel that day. It still is art. What I have, uh, what I discovered, you know, what I have against so many comics, is that, I, is that I think that too many people are illustrating comics. And we should express, not illustrate, we should express, we should justify the script, not just illustrate uh, nicely drawn pictures. So it's very important to do as you feel that day. You have, I have an action scene and I feel highly, so okay, I will do action scene highly, differently. But it's very important to do it as you are that day. You can't fight your own self. And uh, uh, as much as I, I uh, respect all masters and I'm really into this artistry and I like to, to have perfect compositions and all these things, uh, it's very important that, that one feels happy and free. He, uh, to have fun with it. Not to disrespect it, but the, the fun part. If you're not happy doing this, it's very long hours. You don't go uh, out as you used to. You just work and work and work and work. But uh, you really should have fun. And this is something that expresses the page, the script, the, the, you know. I think that this is the part that people should enjoy most yourself, who you are. So I should express, not just illustrate, express something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, only a short question. I will follow your wishes, as well as have a look at the, the future. Is your pint is a Monday trainer from Rio? <laughs> 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 Could you repeat, please? I'm not sure I understood. Uh, your wishes. To talk is your wish is to talk about football. <laughs> is is your bike up a Montag trainer from Real? <laughs> is your bike is up Montag trainer from Real Madrid? Okay. Well, your your bike is will be trainer of Real Madrid. Okay, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. It's just it's not cool to talk about football. It's very I'm a fan of Barcelona club, and, and, and still, really, for real, uh, I still, I still enjoy. Uh, I come from Serbia and, and Yugoslavia, and there is some kind of quality in the style of playing of Barcelona that I really admire. It's easy, it's intelligent, it's being, you know, ball is always faster than, than a player, 
and Madrid is, is okay, but they still are uh, having a, their style is still more tough than I basically like. But uh, I don't dislike them; they're fantastic. But uh, what I enjoy most is really Barcelona, the way they play. Are you planning a football cup? <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but I, did, I did quite a few posters for, uh, you would be surprised, for banks who were promoting football. And I had a great time. I really like, I come from Serbia. So we like football, we like basketball, we like sport. Okay, one more football question. <laughs> it was also my question, why don't you do a, a comic football? <laughs> it, 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 it's just, a, it's just a good, the, the good story is everything, really. Uh, I'm trying to have, uh, lately I have these uh, master classes with artists and, and, and people and uh, 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 the most important thing is, thing is, is the story, is the script. So uh, uh, my job is to justify the script. The colorist's job is to justify my, my black and white pages. It's like, it's like uh, a light show on a concert. A light show should be in, you, in favor of you, not you in favor of, of light show. So it comes, you know, the most important, the, the thing that decides everything is the story. If you read Scout, uh, we have six issues and, and ten books. Uh, there were issues, where, for example, if the issue is about Catcher, who is a disappointed guy with a scar, he's just uh, very bitter and everything is bad, he's an assassin, all these things. So my lines were distorted. I, I tried to make his world like this, to, to, to make uh, transcend what happens to him. And in issue 25, this was issue 9, I think. Then issue 25 was about a gambler. A black guy, a very cold a guy, a very... Uh, uh, son of a bitch, as they say, you know. So every, all the lines were very cold. I tried to make everything just clear, you know, planned. So subconsciously to translate to you what is uh, expecting from you, from you to feel. I'm trying to translate the script for you. Script decides everything. If, if you know the script, uh, uh, script is your common sense. You know, this is the story about people. It's not about my drawing. It's not about great dialogues. It's not about. Uh, it's, it's about the story. It's about these. It's a. It's a poetry. It's a poetry. Okay. When you see a wild bunch, for this, just just an example, you see such a violent movie, and you you, you, you think about it. It is a song. It's about some people who couldn't adapt. And the way it's done, the way it's, it's, it's uh, edited, it, it becomes a, 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 a cut from somebody's life that you should understand, that you should feel richer about when you, when you see it. Not just the effective dialogue. This is what I say, so uh, the, the, the good movie or a good comic is not about illustrating the tough guy. It's about strength in everybody, not toughness. Toughness is just a manner of being, you know. But the strength, the, the you know, the humans, that's the point. So story decides everything. My style is decided by story. You know, if I do, uh, if something is comical or not, if something is dramatical or not, who is the hero? Why? What's happening to him? You know, what happened with his life? So this is the way I should uh, uh, translate the, the 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 script to the reader. It's not just illustrating. The, the, the essence of script is everything. Do you have plans to write scripts for other artists? Yeah, I have, yeah, other I have artists. A, for other artists. Yeah, well, uh, I have one script that's left. I have uh, My parts are written by me that I stopped doing because of scale. But right now, I hope I will uh, have some kind of agreement with the Roma to re to re-edit my uh, pirate serial. Uh, I will do Smokey Joe Blues for Mini, scripted by me, and I have one script extra that it's possible to. There are two artists that are interested, and I would like to just do the question of time and, and just you know schedule, arranging time. But I would like to write more. I, I, I admire writing. I like writing. I think we, have, I think we, we should use the microphone. Yeah. Um, hi, Arm. Uh, for a question: How do you maintain your creativity? I guess. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> Um, how do you maintain your creativity? Are there certain sources that you look to for inspiration, like um, old photography, or are there certain things that you don't do, like you said, you don't watch the Django movie when you illustrate it? Okay, I, have a, I, have a, I think it is to be called a trick, what I do. Uh, uh, I, I like, as I said before, like poetry things, so the, 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 the essence, the, my, I have a weak spot for, spot for Cartier Bresson. Uh, the stories that are inside I try to, to drink, you know. So, 
I, I use a lot of documentation, I, I see a lot of photos, but when I do my page, I never look at anything. Anything. Just I study a lot, have a great time. Maybe a few sketches or things or computers, you know, they, they can you know you can you can go anywhere and see anything. But uh, the, the, the thing I discovered is that when you copy something, it shows, and I hate it. It must be, uh, you know, uh, why? You know, it's not so needed. So uh, uh, I tried to learn things about brewery that we saw last night, or things that move there, you, you, you know, or all old cameras. You, you move here, and then you, you can see that something happened. You know, these things that, you know, how they work. So these things, when you uh, understand them, you, while drawing them, you use your common sense to improvise. This is what gives life. Improvisation. I have also, when I do pencils, I tend not to finish them too much. I see a lot of people finishing pen pencils perfectly, and when they ink their page, it's cold. It's just dead. Just, you know, uh, people doing something like... This is not life. You know, the drawing should be, you know, movable. It's, it's not just one moment that you freeze. It's the lots of moment in one. This is life. This is magic. This is things that happen. So when I uh, try to document my uh, comics, uh, I study a lot, have fun, but when I draw, I move everything. My ta table is clean. We have a last question. The last question. Last question. Um, I got the idea that um, uh, writing a script is done very fast, and drawing the script is about 10 or 50 times longer to work at. Is that uh, idea true, or is it 50 50? What's uh, the balance between uh, these two? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, there is a, I think the, the common sense that, that, that's used in this kind of uh, distribution is okay. At the, at the actual work, I'm paid more, obviously, more, much more than the script writer. But when we receive royalties, it's 50 50. So it's very nicely, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, while I draw, I receive more money. You know, Jason writes a script in a week, maybe, and I need four at least, or maybe more, for these pages. So they pay me more, just monthly, because I, I work much more. But when we receive royalties, when we receive uh, uh, sell, sellings, we share 50 50. Which is pretty fair, I think. This is really okay. Is this your, was this what your question? Or? Um, the question was. Uh, how much time is needed to write the script and how much time is needed to do the drawings for you, one page, for example. You never know. You never, sorry, I misunderstood. Sorry. Uh, uh, you, never, you never really know. Uh, um, um, I will tell you something. Um, you never really know how much you actually work on something because uh, uh, lots of times the best drawings happen very fast. But I didn't know that I was working on them three months before, you know, they were cooking here, you know, I knew that for, uh, there is a moment when Dashiell leaves Carol and he goes with Maggie and, and uh, I don't know, Red Crow kills Catcher, whatever, you know, so you pre prepare yourself and somehow at, at the, the actual moment you said, uh, um, some idea comes but you're ready for it. So the point is to, uh, how should I say, uh, not to, the worst treason uh, you could do about your own script or your own art is uh, not to go with yourself. So, your, uh, your, you should hear what you really feel about it. If you read the lyrics of Bob Dylan, you know, he can, for example, he can write about anything and it means, means something. If you, if you see Morgan Freeman, he can say hello and it means something. It's the way he is. So, the work is in being something. You know, when you see good actors, good writers, uh, No Country for Old Men, for example, Homer McCarthy, all these guys, the main work is um, about essence of things. The actual work is really, you don't notice it, the, the, the best thing that happens in art, last night we talked about it, is that you, uh, you uh, lose the sense of time. This is the best that, 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 you know, when you start working, the best about drawing or, or making lyrics or working on art is that you lose the sense of time. So, three hours pass, you don't even know, you don't notice. So this is, you, maybe this is the, why the whole thing is so hypnotic, because it's, it's so you, you want to do it again and again and again, it's like sex, it's, it's just the, the time stops. And it's a really good feel to be in, feeling to be in. And you never really know, you never really know how much you do need for 
this way, it comes and goes up. Or I'm not good in, in telling you this, you know, just okay. I'm very good in telling you this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you very much. jetzt einen kleinen Augenblick in die Bibliothek zurückziehen, mit einem Kaffee trinken und so weiter. Und dann steht er für, für einen kleinen Signiertermin zur Verfügung. Es ist tatsächlich von ihm in Deutschland ein Comic erschienen in Deutschland. Es ist zwar nur eine einzige Seite, aber ich sehe es da hinten auch. Wir haben einen Tributband für Robert Kramm rausgebracht. Und da hat er sich freundlicherweise auch dran beteiligt mit einem sehr schönen, ich glaube nicht ganz stubenreinen Beitrag, aber wir verkaufen diesen Band auch für 20 Euro drüben, wenn ihr, wenn ihr möchtet. Oder ansonsten wird er eine kleine Weile noch für sich die Aktion zur Verfügung stehen, aber ich gebe mich jetzt einen Augenblick hier, du musst uns mal angucken, sich etwas erholen und bis klar.